Well, have you ever stopped to say, thank you, God, for my challenges? Challenges, you may say. I am not always grateful for hardships, difficulties, stones in my pathway, obstacles. Oh, but today we want to discover the power of thanking God for every experience we're going through. Thanking God for the challenges that are come our way for every problem in life is here to support you in your soul's evolution. We've been talking about the evolving soul, the soul that is here in this time, in this place, to evolve, to grow, to mature, to strengthen, to realize its true self and true nature, to live it out to the highest and best. And every problem is an opportunity to do that. We have this opportunity and this responsibility to grow the soul, to evolve, to mature in our spiritual journey. And it's through these challenges that we grow and we learn and we discover our strengths. I don't know about you, but if you go to the gym, you'll discover people who are working up from different weights. Not everybody starts at five pounds and stays at five pounds. Those who start lifting five, start moving to 10. Those who are lifting 10, start moving to 20 and so on and so on because they want to grow their strengths. They want to evolve. They want to see their muscles building. And it's through the challenge of lifting a variety of weights. It's a, through the challenge of expanding and going deeper and deeper or going heavier and heavier that they're actually building the muscle. So it is as we're going through the challenges of life. As we go through each one, we're strengthening. We are discovering our spiritual evolution. We're growing the soul. Challenges are things that quite often we bring about in life. Without clear thinking, we create them or we often attract them for the soul's purpose, for our soul's growth. As a visionary, you'll discover that you will attract challenges that will enable you to be an even greater visionary. And as a believer, you will attract or draw to you challenges and opportunities for you to strengthen the power of your believing. I know this for a fact. So it is within my own life as the pastor and visionary leader of City of Light, as one who has a great faith to believe that all things are possible. There are many times when I've attracted circumstances to my life that would say it seems impossible. But what was necessary is that I grow, I evolve, that the soul itself goes through an evolution as it faces these challenges of that which may seem to be impossible only to discover it is possible through the growing experience, through facing the challenge, through going through each one of these circumstances. There is an evolution that makes you stronger and stronger in your belief and in your vision to be able to see even greater things unfold. You see, our problems are not awful. They're wonderful tools that are designed to push you forward. That's right, our challenges, they're not awful. They're designed to push us forward, to move us, to help us in that growing process. That's right, the universe, this divine presence in you that is everywhere and in all things is assisting you in the growth of your soul. Something is pushing me, you may say. As you go through the challenge, you may say, something is behind me, pushing me, pushing me into being greater in faith, greater in vision, greater in the power of believing. And that something may be a challenge that's in your pathway. We know that growth is part of what we're called to do and experience in this world. For we find in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, that growth is what it was all about for Jesus. And Jesus, our great example, kept increasing in wisdom, increasing, growing in wisdom, strengthening, experiencing more and more, growing in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This beautiful text then invites us to understand we too, as followers of Jesus, are going to be called to grow, to mature, to strengthen, to evolve, to allow the soul to mature. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5 says, But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up 
in all aspects. In every aspect of our life, we're going to see that growth is there if we allow these challenges or opportunities to really be a blessing within our journey and to be opportunities to learn lessons and experience the opportunity to share our highest and best and to allow it to evolve. So what's pushing you forward? What's part of your evolution? Is there something that you're going through? For many, we're all experiencing this pandemic, COVID-19. As we're going through it, we find it's pushing us in certain ways to evolve with greater patience, greater understanding, greater compassion, discovering new ways to share love, seeing that in this challenge, we are all growing and it's causing us to evolve. It is something that is pushing us in this evolutionary pattern. We find a beautiful example in the Bible of the story of Jonah and the whale. You're all familiar with it, I'm sure, from your childhood experiences of Bible stories. Jonah being called of God to go and preach in Nineveh tell them the good news but deep within Jonah he harbored a resentment for the people of Nineveh were an enemy to his people and to his land he didn't want to go to people who he didn't uh, relate to or agree with or align with he held within him some inner judgments and inner condemnations and so instead he begins to flee and he runs from the calling and runs from the space of Nineveh to go in the opposite direction and boards a ship headed off into the seas. And as he does, the ship encounters a great storm and tossed to and fro, the sailors on board are saying, what's causing this storm? What is, who is uh, on board that may be the culprit that the seas are, are uh, acting up in such a way? And well, Jonah confessed, I'm running. I'm running from the call on my life. I'm running from my purpose. I'm running from what I'm called to do in sharing love, compassion, sharing this message with the world. I have passed an, out such judgment and I'm living in such condemnation. Simply throw me overboard and it will solve the storm. Oh, sailors weren't so hip on that idea at first, but realizing the storm went on, they said, you know what, let's throw this man Jonah overboard and he's thrown overboard only to be swallowed by a whale. Now, here's the issue that we find in this beautiful metaphor for us. Totally, it's full of symbolism because we certainly understand no one's going to live within a belly of a whale for three days and there is no uh, fish this large to swallow us up and us exist in a living context within its body. So we understand that it's all full of metaphor for us and great symbolism in our lives. For as Jonah did not wish to preach to the people of Nineveh, because he saw them as people who were different, of diverse views, he saw them separate from him and did not want any relationship with them. That's what he drew unto himself and experienced a challenge, a challenge to help evolve his spirit, to evolve his soul. For there his, he wished Nineveh to die in its sins and not turn to God and live. So Jonah turned to run away from the city of Nineveh and to go uh, in an opposite direction. And quite often this, this is the same story we go through in our lives as we're dealing with some inner issues in our own heart and mind. Our prejudices, our racisms, our judgments, our condemnation of others, where well, we may say we feel so separate from someone. I'm not going to build relationships with them. I'm not going to build bridges with them. I'm not going to share God's love with them. I'm not going to, I wish them to be dead. I don't want to be in association with them. And trust me, in today's world, our nation is so polarized and full of division. There are many people who are going through this experience in their life as they're cutting off others and living in a world of feeling I'm separate from you. I'm not like you. I don't want to be connected with you. The universe of life is uh, in practice of what you sow, you reap. And what was pushing Jonah is this universal law of life. As he began to sow this condemnation, as he began to sow this resentment, as he sowed this refusal, as he began to sow this mindset 
of separation, saying, I don't want anything to do with these people. I'm not going to share with them. I'm not going to be in relationship with them. So it is that the universal law began to create the challenge for him. We have to look at oftentimes and say, where has our anger got us? Where has our impatience brought us? Where has our fear taken us? Because that which we put out, the universal law is saying that's what you're attracting. You're going to be attracting circumstances, drawing to you an opportunity then for you to work through anger, fear, impatience, and so much more. Now the Lord caused a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was alive within the fish for three days and three nights. Now here we find this wonderful metaphor in love. Because as we look through scripture, we find that fish represent ideas, new ways of thinking, new thought. You know, Jesus invited the disciples to cast their nets on the other side. They'd been fishing all night, caught nothing. And when they did, they cast their net on another side of the boat and they gleaned nets full. You see, it's a wonderful metaphor for us that when we change our thinking, when we make a change, where there's a collection of all kinds of ideas and possibilities that are available to us. But too often we're fishing on the same old side of this is my problem, this is my problem, this is my problem, and we're not catching anything. And then suddenly we, oh, let me cast my net on the other side and say, I'm looking for solutions, I'm open to solutions, and we glean nets full of ideas and solutions available to us. So the ancient metaphor in metaphysical understanding of this passage is that here is a big idea, a big idea that swallows up Jonah in his experience. It's a whale of an idea, a whale of increase, something better, allowing Jonah to have the something better rather than being tossed over into the ocean to drown, to sink to the bottom, to die. The universe swallows him up with the opportunity to contemplate the better idea, a better way of living, a better way of existing. Jonah is swallowed by the possibility of something better, offering us the possibilities of something better is available what the universe does if we will let it. Now, so often we're in the midst of our challenge. We're in the midst of our problem. And all we can do is focus on that. And we have forgotten that there is a whale of opportunity to just swallow us up full of solutions for the journey of our life. We find that many times that we are blind to it. And what we may see that's swallowing us up is something that is adversarial. Or we may say, oh, wait a minute. I don't want to be swallowed up by a whale. Whoa, wait, 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 wait. What is this? It's this challenge that's offering you an opportunity to something even better. Several years ago, we were looking to purchase a new building. City of Light had sold its location and was out looking for the right and perfect place to continue its ministry in Atlanta. We found a, a beautiful sanctuary, a wonderful location with a huge parking lot right next door to the Marta Station on New Peachtree Road. We thought this is the perfect place. Huge auditorium, lots of property and places where we could even put a baseball diamond or soccer field. Or there's all kinds of possibilities. We were dreaming some great dreams of things that we could do at this location. And we kept preparing for the day that we could purchase this. Well, we had talked to the congregation that owned the building. They were ready to sell. In fact, they entertained our proposal and they agreed to our proposal. And we waited for more and more for the process to move forward. Well, one day we sat outside the facility with our board of directors and we were praying for the ministry that was ready to move into this building. Our city of light vision to unfold in a dynamic way in this property. And the pastor came up and he said to us, well, what are you guys doing here? I said, we're praying for you. We're praying for your ministry and for ours. We're praying that as you move out to something greater and you found your new location where you're moving in and we move in, the dynamic blessing is for each and every one of us. And we said, well, what are you doing? Oh, we're hanging new drapes. We're painting. Wait, wait, wait. 
you're painting and hanging new draperies and doing all these things. I thought you were selling. I thought you were move, moving out. We're ready to finalize purchase. Ah, we realized we weren't in the same consciousness. He wasn't thinking about selling now. He wasn't thinking about releasing this building or moving out. We were, and we weren't aligned in this consciousness of like consciousness of agreement. Wow, suddenly we had a whale of a problem. But it was a whale of possibilities that began to open the doors for us to think in new ways. Well, if this isn't the building for us, then what? Because what we've been shown is an example of the possibilities of property and of new location and a ministry expansion that were available to us. Oh, suddenly we were, shall we say, swallowed up in the whale of something better. You see, many people thought, oh, this is a challenge. Now you've lost this opportunity, this building, where will we go? Many people began to think in fear and fret, not realizing this challenge is our greatest blessing to continue to believe and to evolve as a congregation, to continue to hold our vision strong and say, we know that all things are working together and something even greater is unfolding for us. Well, it did as we rested in the knowing that God is at work at all times for our highest and best. It was not too much longer that we discovered this fabulous building for an even lesser price, a greater facility, a newer facility, an excellent location, and on goes the list of the something better that was found in the whale of challenge, that was found in the body of this uh, moment of, shall we say, of, uh, of what many people thought was an obstacle, but really was an opportunity for great blessing. As we look at this story, we find that the ship was tossed in the storms and Jonah acknowledges the cause of the storm that he brought this challenge on with his evil thoughts, his error thinking. And so often we do the same. When we slip into fear, doubt, lack, stress, in the midst of any challenge, we're the one who's just stirring up the storms, stirring up the storms. Because let me tell you this, what you're going through is for you to evolve. And you need not evolve in the tough and rough ways of irritation. You need not evolve through the stress and worry. You can evolve and grow by standing strong. I shall not be moved like a tree planted by the waters. I will not be moved in my faith and my belief. I remain strong in the midst of this storm and I hold to my belief and I hold to that which I know to be true, that God is making a way when there seems to be no way. You see, what happens when our conscious mind casts out or releases the evil thoughts, the error thinking, it then falls into the subconscious, into the deeper mind, into that wonderful place of the divine, of the inner knowing. And it is there that we may be swallowed up by the great fish of increase and possibility of new ideas as we go deeper into the ocean of thought, shall we say, we find that which may swallow us up with new possibilities. We don't experience that when we're filled with fear, when we're filled with doubt, when we're always questioning and wondering, but we do experience it when we rest in the perfect peace of God. Now, I wanna tell you this, in this beautiful story, this illustration full of so many symbolisms, we find the number three, Jonah in the body of the whale for three days and three nights. We find the number three throughout the Bible in some really key moments. Key moments such as the resurrection of Jesus in three days. We might find numerous examples of the number three always speaking about something is ready to unfold. Something amazing is about to happen when the, we find this number three used in biblical symbolism. And here we find that Jonah is in that belly of the whale, metaphorically in that place. And he's there until something's ready to unfold, until he's ready to move forward. Let me tell you this, you're gonna remain in your challenge. You're gonna remain in your difficulty. You're gonna remain in your obstacle. You remain in your opportunity. Yes, until you're ready to move out. We wanna get ready. 
We don't want to stay in the obstacle. We don't want to stay in the challenge. We don't want to stay in this place of, of unknowing. We want to move forward, don't we? So here's some suggestions that'll help us to choose to move on, to really embrace the whale of an issue of the goodness of God unfolding for our lives. To move through our challenge, let me offer you this. When you face it and you feel swallowed up by life's challenge, make up your mind as to how long you will be in this negative situation. Wow, you, what, what, I can make up my mind? That's right. You can say, I'm gonna stay in this negative mindset of fear, worry, and stress for 60 seconds, or 60 minutes, or 60 days. The choice is all yours. How long do you wanna stay there? It's up to you. If you choose one minute or one hour to worry, I encourage you to worry all you want within that choice. Get it over with, you know? Just start worrying like crazy if that's what you want, because that's what you've chosen. And enjoy your worry, enjoy your fret, enjoy your stress, enjoy your turmoil, enjoy your anxiety, enjoy it all. Because when you finally make up a decision to say, I am not gonna worry about this anymore, is the day that the issue will vomit you out. That the wonderful increase, the new ideas will be there to throw you out onto dry land, just as Jonah is in this symbolic story. So it's really important for you to say, how long do you want to dwell within the belly of the whale? How long do you want to stay there? It's up to you. You get that choice. You make the decision. And along with this, to move through your challenges in life, once you've made a decision, I want out, something that's going to help you through this all is to create an arsenal of positive thoughts. That's right. I want to emphasize this word arsenal. Arsenal meaning an array of equipment available for a certain purpose. So what kind of spiritual equipment have you stockpiled? Do you have an arsenal of affirmations that are ready to help you through your greatest trials and tribulations? Affirmations like, I have the strength to overcome all obstacles. I have the strength, I have the strength, I have the strength to overcome all obstacles. And saying that, put that in your arsenal. Make sure you've got some equipment, some spiritual thoughts that help you. How about my soul gives me the courage to resolve this problem? My soul gives me the courage to resolve this problem. So having these affirmations ready and prepared when you are facing challenges in your life and you feel like you're swallowed up by the whale, or you've been tossed in the seas of this chaotic world of thought and you, the oceans of waters are wanting to drown you out. Oh, hold on to those affirmations and have that arsenal ready. Next, I really wanna encourage you also, cultivate friendships with those who will encourage you. People of like-mindedness. People who believe, people who trust, People who are optimistic, people who are positive, who have a positive practical spirituality that's founded in the understanding of the truth of God. Find those people and create your village and how important it is that you've got a village around you of support. I learned that very clearly living in Africa for those years. I saw the demonstration of village life and how having a village around you, it was those grandparents and great grandparents and grandchildren and mothers and fathers who all work together, collaborating, sharing with one another to make the village a success. Sharing food, building homes together, working the crops and the fields together in collaboration that whenever anyone went through a challenge or a hardship, there was someone there to assist. So it is, who's in your spiritual village? Do you have a spiritual village that you've created are you part of a spiritual community of people who are there of like-mindedness who will help you through every challenge that you're going through? Because one of our big obstacles in this whole process that we see so clearly in this Bible story is the ego. That ego is a big obstacle and it will keep you in the belly of a whale for a long, long time. It's gonna keep you there in that place where you feel swallowed up, it's gonna keep you there because too often the ego is rooted in what we call the third dimension 
or the physical world, the physical world of all of its limitations. And the ego is constantly saying, oh, I'm being ruled by emotional dramas. I'm being ruled by the limitations of around me. I'm being ruled by all these kind of things. And that's where the ego's voice finds strength in limitation and emphasizing it over and over again. And that ego is often afraid of losing control. It wants to fight with your soul and to resist the challenges in consciousness that would say, wait a minute, I believe that there's a realm out there of spirituality where all things are possible. I believe that there is a realm to be lived in of the spiritual life, the realm of God. Oh, but the physical, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. This may be crazy. And what we find ourselves is being pulled back and forth, being pulled by the limitations of ego and of this world and of the third dimension. And then the spiritual world being the fourth dimension, that which is the inner awareness of abundance and of being all good. It's pulling us here and it's pulling us there when we find ourselves being torn apart until we were really ready to release the ego in the journey of our lives. You see, this ego constantly wants to say, what you're doing is simply a waste of time. All this spiritual stuff, hocus pocus, oh, no, no, no. Don't you realize there's limitations in this world? Don't you know, there are boundaries and there are things that you cannot move beyond. Don't you know, you'll never succeed in these ways. You see, when we are beginning to shed this ego, it's when we begin to transcend this consciousness and we move on up. And what we find is that we begin to welcome and embrace. We say, I am so tired of sitting in the belly of the whale. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of being in this limbo stage. I'm tired of being swallowed up. I want to move forward. I want to be successful. I want to experience health and wholeness. I am done with this. Oh, hallelujah, when we come to that place where we finally say, I'm not taking this anymore. I'm moving on up. I'm moving on up to a higher place of thinking. I'm moving up to that upper room of consciousness. I'm moving to that place where I begin to see and live and experience old things from a new perspective. And what happens then is that limited personality will have less of a hold on you. That limited personality of ego. You're going to observe life from a new vantage point and you're going to gain a perspective of the soul that it will be easier to remain emotionally detached from your problems. Woo! How wonderful to be emotionally detached from our problems. Challenges has come. So, challenges, obstacles are there. So, what? It's a learning experience, an experience for me to evolve. I'm evolving through this. I'm experiencing a chance of strengthening. I'm lifting my spiritual weights here and I'm building my muscle and I am grateful for this experience. Something is pushing me out of the belly of the whale. Something is pushing me. And that is this wonderful challenge that I don't want to live in, but I want to move through. I don't want to stay here. I want to move beyond it. Jonah needed this challenge to evolve and it brought, he brought it upon himself with his thinking. It was only through this challenge that Jonah could let his ego go and begin to open his heart, open his heart in a way to the people of Nineveh and to go and speak the good news. He had a real transformation in the belly of the whale. He had an experience that he moved away from limitations and self-centeredness to now seeing the world of unlimited love and a generous grace in this divine presence. So today I'm asking you, are you ready to say thank you God for my challenges? Are you ready to say thank you God for every experience I'm going through? Because I'm going through with great peace and assurance that the door is open, that God is making a way. I know this, and so I rest in, in just perfect ease as I move through this challenge in life. And I'm learning, I'm learning. I'm so open to receive. I hope you're ready to say that today because if we don't see our challenges as opportunities for growth or change, we will never be grateful for them. And that gratitude will transform 
the experience completely. I'm grateful for COVID-19, you know, because we're learning something. I'm grateful for all of the challenges we're going through because we are experiencing whole new things. This challenge has brought us live streaming and opportunities to share our message all across the world. Because of this challenge of COVID-19, we've learned how to reach out to hundreds of people, touching people in Egypt and India, Bangladesh, China, all across the United States connecting with loved ones who haven't been in contact with City of Light for quite some time are now available, all because of this challenge, all because of what we're going through. Is this a bad thing or a good thing or just a thing that's causing us to evolve and grow for our highest and best? So today, let's say thank you, thank you, thank you for every challenge because in it we find cause and effect Thank you, Universal Law, for pushing me to where I am today. And give me another shove, Universal Law. Shove me into my highest and best. Push me behind when I may be late or moving slow or hesitant in some way. Allow these circumstances to come my way that evolve my soul because I am determined to live the highest and best. Today, something is pushing you. It's a challenge. Just say, I'm so grateful and know that you're going through it with the power and presence of God leading you each step of the way. Amen.